So this is the chart that I just put my own green trend line on. Forget about these other two for now. We only care about the sum total. And in 2013, we began to underperform, as I said. And now we are behind by more than 10x. In fact, approaching 100x. Just to catch up to where we should be by 2025, we will have to gain another 100x in power in the next three years. Obviously, that does not seem to be happening anytime soon because the computing architecture that all supercomputers are built on is saturating and it costs more and more dollars to get less and less gain. We've seen a little bit of a bump, almost imperceptible, from this underperforming trend line. I contend that is because of the excessive money printing of the COVID era, which in fact has boosted technology slightly because, as we know, money printing is the fuel of technological progress. But that is a secondary point. That's not going to get us all the way up to here. What is needed is investment in new computing architectures, which I'll talk about in a minute. But think about it. Just to get back to where we were supposed to be, we would need to get to a 100x gain in the next three years. If that is too little time to converge back, we would have to have a 1000x gain in the next six or seven years just to intercept where this trend line is going to be in 2028 or 29. And this is extremely important because look what I've written over here, missing economic prosperity. If you went back to 2000 or even 2005, all of the predictions of technological products we would have or economic progress that will occur by the 2020s, all of those things still seem pretty far away. All the best futurists, notably Ray Kurzweil, they predicted a lot of things for 2022 or thereabouts that have not happened. But guess what? All of those things are behind by roughly the same amount. All of those predictions for 2020, 2022 that were 15 or 18 or 20 years ago are all behind by the same six or seven years. And that shows that there is a cross-cutting theme common to all of those prediction delays, which is that computational power is 20x, 30x behind where it should be. And that is why we don't have those accelerations in cures for cancer or much more advanced CGI graphics and video game consoles or all kinds of advanced video conferencing capabilities and so forth. All of those big innovations, we can list dozens upon dozens of them, are behind by the same amount, six or seven years. We do still inch towards them, but we're not getting closer in terms of making up for lost time for this reason. And that, of course, also means missing economic prosperity. The world economy should be 10 to 20% bigger right now. Stock market valuations should be about twice what they are right now. And all of that would be true simply if we had stayed on this long-term trend line. Now, I believe we will revert back to this trend line because if we don't and we get flatter and flatter, like we're seeing in this number 500 chart here, then human technological progress has stalled and we won't have a technological singularity. We'll have a mundane, saturated world of very small incrementalist improvements. I don't believe that's going to be the case because that has never been the case in four billion years of evolution of life on Earth. So why would that be the case now? Instead, what I think is happening is that these paradigms are what all the investors, venture capitalists, etc., want to invest in. They don't want to risk money in a new computing architecture, even though the new computing architecture is what is needed to return back to the trend line. And remember, this happened at a much smaller scale in the 1950s and 60s when the first transistors and eventually integrated circuits were being built as a continuation of the computing trend because the technologies before then, namely vacuum tubes, were obsolete. Now that was at a much smaller scale and that was too small a factor in the economy to be of any effect outside of the few people following that field. But now, since a larger and larger percentage of the world economy is becoming high tech. 3% in fact, as you can see from this video up here in this tag, this has bigger and bigger implications. Now there's always some candidate technology for the next paradigm of computing. In the early 2000s, it was Buckminster Fullerene or Buckyballs, a type of soccer ball shaped carbon molecule. Then it became carbon nanotubes for a few years and that was to be the next paradigm of computing. 
After that, it was graphene, yet another type of carbon that was supposed to be far more efficient in terms of circuitry and computing power. Then it was DNA computing that was in the news for a while as a new type of computing architecture that would be 100 times faster immediately. And a few years ago, there was quantum computing, which got a lot of media hype. But now you don't hear about that as much anymore, how each qubit was a doubling of the computational power and you could daisy chain 30 qubits together. We heard about that three or four years ago in the media, but now people don't talk about it that much. If it was that profound, then some company that was exclusively devoted to quantum computing would have a market cap of $500 billion by now. So none of these technologies have come to fruition yet. There are others in the works that could come to fruition. I'm actually connected to a company that is working on a new computing architecture that can deliver five orders of magnitude of computational gain. And conveniently, five orders of magnitude, which is five of these rows, is something that would get us right back to the trend line in in nine or 10 years, in fact. So five orders of magnitude, 100,000 X gain in 10 years or so would actually get us back to the trend line. But I hope this illustrates why a new paradigm of computing is not something that is easy to just decide to start up. Which technology should be bet on? The investor community has to collectively decide that they are going to risk a few billion dollars on each of these new paradigms of computing to see if they can jump ahead of all existing supercomputers and attract all supercomputing application demand towards them because that is what it will take. The good news is time is on its side because the amount of investment dollars needed to trigger a new computational architecture, a new paradigm of computing, becomes less and less because the area enclosed by the two lines, which is, again, missing economic prosperity at the end of the day, becomes larger and larger. Therefore, the atom, the technonomic medium of the world, is trying to find a solution to get us back to the trend line more and more desperately, and therefore less and less dollar investment is needed to catalyze the new paradigm of computing. I hope that makes sense. So these are very profound subjects, but this is an exceptionally important thing to understand if you want to see how technology connects to economic progress, where we ought to be versus where we are, and measuring the extent to which we are behind the trend line, and also the gigantic profits that will be made by anyone connected to the technologies that get us back to the trend line. And if you believe we'll never get back to the trend line, that's a different discussion, but I don't believe that because that means humanity has hit its ceiling and we're done. But this is something to watch, and that's why I like doing updates on this particular subject. This is just about the most advanced subject you can possibly think of, especially when we connect this to our search for extraterrestrial intelligence and a probabilistic assessment of how some civilizations ultimately became more advanced. That's also a different topic, but I do speak about that in other videos on this channel as well. So that was a lot of material, but I hope you found this interesting. And if you like this type of content, I urge you to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. Thank you very much for watching.